Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear colleagues, depending upon where you are. So the three main objectives uh, for the next 40 minutes is to answer three basic questions. So how does the immune system recognize a transplanted organ? What are the main components of this immune system uh, that, uh, that drives uh, the autoimmune response? And what are the specific mechanisms of injury that lead to uh, allograft uh, failure ultimately? And, and to start, I always like the idea of, of thinking it through, you know, what is, what, how does a kidney uh, transplant get rejected? And what's unique about a kidney transplant is that uh, whatever organ transplant that we transplant, it comes with a unique fingerprint, something that's different between individuals. And that's what allows the immune system to recognize something as being a foreign and drive uh, the autoimmune response. And when we think about that fingerprint, uh, the most polymorphic of all proteins that we have in our body are the human leukocyte antigens. So what, what are these proteins? So these proteins are nothing more than receptors that are present in all nucleated cells. And they have a major role in protecting us against potential threats. We have the class one HLA antigens that are expressed on all nucleated cells. And have, we have the specialized class two HLA antigens that are expressed primarily by antigen presenting cells and also by endothelial cells in the setting of inflammation. So these are really kind of the fingerprints. What, what, what drives the majority of the alumin response in the transplant scenario, and that's in part because they're highly polymorphic across individuals. One interesting aspect about kidney transplantation when we compare to bone marrow transplantation is that in kidney, we do not try to HLA match individuals. First, because it would be extremely hard to do that. And second, that if you look at short-term outcomes, and so this is a curve of allograft survival in deceased donor kidney transplants from 1985 to 2011. And I'm getting here data from the collaborative trans transplant study from Europe. And we are looking at different degrees of HLA mismatch. And we're looking at three main sites of HLA, HLA class, uh, class 1 A and B and class 2 DR. And what we can see here is that up to two, three years after transplant, if you compare the different groups with different HLA mismatches, the difference in graft survival is minimal. So the outcomes are actually very good. We, of course, the, the, the exception of this that we try to avoid is if somebody has a preformed donor specific antibody. But otherwise, HLA matching is not something that takes into our equation when we're kind of selecting, for example, a deceased donor kidney offer. So what is, what is important to know is that even though the short-term outcomes are very similar across the zero to six antigen mismatch, if we follow these patients long enough, 15, 20 years, we start seeing the curves kind of separating. And the risk of graft failure is about 13% if you have a zero antigen mismatch, but it can go as high as 64% if you're looking at an ABDR six antigen mismatch. So this is, this is relevant as, as we you know, are trying to optimize and increase the long-term graft survival. And, and, and to, the caveat here is that you know, A, B, and G, R are the ones that are mostly polymorphic, and this is why you know, we've been kind of using it. But we know that there's a lot of importance also in DQ as being a major class two. Uh, DP, a little bit less uh, expressed, so a little bit less important, and the C. But these, you know, again, just to make the, 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 the comment how important HLA can be uh, in the long term. And we also know that even in the, apps, in the, the presence of HLA identical, not twins, but HLA identical donor and recipient, in particular in A, B, and DR, they can still develop a rejection process. So we still require some immune suppression, maybe less than somebody who is a six inch in a mismatch, and we've learned in the past uh, two years that, that there's also the potential of having mismatches in known HLA sites that may also drive the alumine response. I'm not gonna get into the details of that, but just to, to, to put in perspective that HLA is the most polymorphic and the ones that drives most of the alumine response, but it is possible also to have other known HLA antigens that can drive uh, the immune response after transplantation. And I'm going to do a tangential here because we talk about a lot about autoimmunity, but if we, when we look at you know transplant outcomes, uh, we know that uh, almost one third, the third leading cause of graft loss in the long term is recurrence of glomerular disease. So even though that's kind of separate, the principles of autoimmunity may not necessarily you know uh, 
correlate with this, but, but it's important for us to keep an understanding that this is definitely something that we have to tackle.